Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good to see everybody here at Mount Olivet for worship of our risen Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Those that have joined us in person, those that are watching us online, good to have everybody here uh, as we uh, celebrate a time of worship uh, with each other. I hope everybody has received a copy of the bulletin. Uh, inside each bulletin is one of these information sheets, also has our prayer uh, request on the other side. I just want to hit a few of them real quick. Again, thank you to everybody who has, uh, to this point, turned in their pledge cards. Uh, we prayed over them. We celebrated last Sunday as being the day to turn them in. If you still have one, it's not too late. We're certainly going to take it. Uh, so bring your pledge cards in if you haven't turned them in just yet. If you know someone who hasn't turned theirs in, uh, tell them to bring it on. We'll certainly uh, take it. Uh, again, we're going through another Bible reading plan for November, doing First and Second Peter and James. I think we've finished First Peter. We're now in Second Peter. We'll hit James in about, about a week or so. If you need a copy of the plan, uh, let me know. Uh, next Sunday is going to be fun at 4 o'clock here at the church. Everybody is invited to gather to make Advent wreaths because two weeks from today is that first Sunday of Advent, if you can believe it. So next to Sunday at 4 o'clock, we're going to gather, we're going to make Advent wreaths. We'll listen to some Christmas music. We'll have Christmas cookies and other assorted treats. But we need to know if you're coming. So do sign up on the sheet outside of Joe's office. Everybody's going to get a frame, the candles, the artificial greenery, as well as some picks and things to put in it. If you got something you want to bring for your own personal wreath, whether it be live greenery or whatever it is, uh, bring it. Uh, we'll all put them all together uh, next Sunday. That's going to be a good time. Uh, speaking of Advent, uh, each of the Sundays in Advent, as well as Christmas Day and New Year's Day, uh, we're having one service at 10 o'clock. We'll get back to the two services on January uh, the 8th. Uh, charge conference is this afternoon, right after the 11 o'clock uh, worship service. Uh, administrative uh, council members, so you need to be there if you can. Uh, save the date for Sunday, December 4th. We're going to play bingo here at the church. That'll start at 5 o'clock. Fun way to kind of hang out and have fellowship with one another. If you want to have a poinsettia in the sanctuary for Christmas time, uh, the order forms are floating around. They need to be back in by Sunday, November 27th. So by the first Sunday of Advent, make sure you fill this form out and gotten them back in to us. There's a fundraiser uh, for Room at the Inn. That's on December 4th. And senior adults, you got a meal coming up on December 15th. And there'll be more information about that uh, down the road. So that's all that's, that's on here. Uh, one thing we want to do, though, before we get going is you may remember we sent a team over to Costa Rica back in the summertime. Uh, typically when they return, they give everybody kind of a briefing on what they did and all the, the things that they saw. Unfortunately, there was some illness that ran through the team uh, when they got back, uh, so we had to postpone it a little bit. But this morning, uh, Jed Dixon is going to share a few minutes about what the trip meant to him and the things that he experienced. Uh, if anybody is interested in more information on going to Costa Rica, there's a sign-up sheet outside of Joe's office if you want to put your name and contact information uh, there. Uh, before Jed co comes up here, though, there is a short video they want everybody to watch. My first trip at Strong Missions was very moving. It was the most emotional experience I've ever had with Jesus. Um, I've seen God in a million different ways while visiting here. Um, I have worked with the kids from Costa Rica through dance. And also, my last time here, I did a little bit of construction work as well. At Strong Missions, it has been great. Everyone has been inclusive and helping us with what to do and what we need. It's definitely a good experience for your life. It really has shown me that I want to serve others more. delivering 60 grocery bags. First we went grocery shopping and you can only imagine how chaotic that was with the language barrier and I can't even explain how moving the experience was and how many ways I saw God and the team that I was with with Mr. Charlie for letting me do this and trusting me with it and the people for allowing us to help them and they were so beyond gracious.
Oh, I would say 100% calm. Uh, I know multiple people that sign up that have their concerns and they come here and they all go away. It is the most breathtaking experience I've ever lived through. Um, first of all, the people here, like I said, are just amazing. I highly recommend coming. <laughs> So uh, Jed and his son Cal went uh, this past summer, and he just wants to say a few words to you about his experience over in Costa Rica. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jed Dixon. I went to the Costa Rican mission trip this summer, and uh, it was an amazing experience. There was 23 of us that went, and I think probably half of those were youth that went on the group. And to get a chance to, to go into a country that's a developing country and being able to help people who desperately needed it, just it felt good. And I just would encourage anybody who has it on their heart to get with Ed and Rhonda and they will be glad to tell you more about it. Um, I think the thing that kind of stuck with me was the youth that went and how they were able to... Um, find it in their heart to go and just let Christ lead them. So just encourage you guys to get with Ed and Rhonda. Very um, worthwhile trip, and we'll do it again. And, and just uh, if you have any questions, come see me at the, at the end. Thank you. Thanks, bud. Friends, let us pray. Holy and gracious one, we give thanks to you for giving us this time to be in worship with our brothers and sisters. We thank you for your presence here with us this morning as well as your continuing presence with us every day. We thank you for the ways that you bless us, ways both large and small. Lord, help us not to take any of it for granted. We thank you for the indwelling Holy Spirit and ask that as we go through our worship service today, Lord, that you open our hearts, our minds, our ears to what message it is that awaits us. What is there in the hymns that we sing and the prayers that we pray as your word is proclaimed in the children's moment, in the sermon, Lord, what is there for us that you want us to know? Show us the ways that we need to be straightened as well as those ways our relationship with you needs to be strengthened. We thank you for the love that you show us. We thank you for our Savior, Christ Jesus. And it's in his name we pray these things. Amen. Well, friends, let us now get our hearts and minds ready for worship.
friends, I want to invite you now to stand as you're able and join me in our call to worship. It's found on page 740 of our hymnal, page 740, in the Psalm 3, page 740. O oh Lord, how many are my foes? Many are rising against me. Many are saying of me, there is no help for them in But you, O oh Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I lie down and sleep, awake again, for the Lord sustains me. Arise, O Lord, for you strike all my enemies on the cheek. You break the teeth of the wicked. I invite you now to turn to page 171 as we sing our opening hymn. There's something about that name. Uh, we'll sing it through twice on page 171. <laughs> Let us now all together make our statement of faith, our confession of faith. Let us proclaim those things we know to be true as contained in our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. For thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. So this is where we'll have our children's moment. I don't see any wee babies uh, in the pews, but it's so good 
that I'm hoping you'll do it again for our friends that are watching online and for the maybe not so younger children that are in our, in our sanctuary. So, it's kind of hard to do a children's moment when the kids are not here, but I do know that there's some families who are under the weather and that they were going to be watching online, so we do say hi to them right now. So here goes. So I'm, yes. so I'm talking to you and I need active participation, okay? Thank you. So my question to you is have you ever been really, really thirsty? Yeah. And what did you do to relieve that thirst? Drank some water, exactly. So when I was a little girl, I remember going with my grandmother to visit uh, someone and we played and we played hard and I was hot and I was thirsty and I wanted something to drink. And this person said, well, let's go get something to drink. And I was expecting to go in and get some water out of the faucet, but that was not the case. We had to go to a well. The well was an open well, and what we did is we had to lower a bucket into the water and get some water out of, out of the well. It was so good, and it tasted so delicious, and I enjoyed it so very much. In the Bible, there are lots of stories about wells, and there are lots of stories about water. And if you remember what you know about a well, the well has to go deep, doesn't it? It has to go deep enough to get that good, clean water that's underground, okay? And in, the, in Isaiah 12, he talks about the well. And it says something interesting with that because Isaiah says that when we remember what God does for us, we thank him and we praise him, it's like being filled up and refreshed at a well. Wow. Think about that. So instead of filling us with, up with water, God is filling us with his joy, the joy of his salvation. So every time we think of God, and we think of him with love, and we thank him, what's happening to us? we're getting filled up. We're getting filled up and it's like getting that life-giving water from the well again and again and again. So isn't that a good excuse to take some extra time with God? Oh yeah, I think so. So what um, I invite the children to do earlier today and I will invite you to do now is to do an echo prayer with me. I'll say, and then you say after me, okay? God, you give us strength. God, you, give us strength. you save us. You save us. We, trust we trust you. We will not be afraid. We, will not be afraid. we, remember, what we remember what you do. You fill our hearts with joy. Hearts with joy. We praise you. We tell about you. We thank you. Amen. The Lord be with you. Our gospel reading this morning comes from Luke chapter 21, verses 5 through 19. Now hear these words. And while some were speaking of the temple, how it was adorned with noble stones and offerings, he said, 
As for these things that you see, the days will come when there will not be left here one stone upon another that will be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will these things be? What will the sign be when these things are about to take place? And he said, See that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he. The time is at hand. Do not go after them. And when you hear of wars and tumults, do not be terrified. For these things must first take place, but the end will not be at once. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and pestilences. And there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. But before, as all, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons. And you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be your opportunity to bear witness. Settle it, therefore, in your minds. Do not meditate beforehand how to answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be delivered up by by even parents, brothers, and relatives, and friends. And some of you will be put to death. You will be hated for my name's sake, but not a hair on your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your lives. This is the word of God for you and I, the children of God. Friends, we come now to our time of prayer for and with one another. Just a few reminders and maybe uh, announcements for those who might be here for the first time. Uh, in each and every pew is one of these prayer request cards. If there is someone, something you want our church to be an honest and earnest, fervent prayer for, I encourage you to fill one of these out and drop it in one of the two offering boxes on your way out of worship. If it's something that is personal, something private, something you want known just between you and I, 
I still encourage you to fill one of these out, but just put it in my hand once worship has concluded or just drop it on my desk uh, on your way out. If you're watching us online and you have a prayer request, do use whatever comment function or whatever uh, mode you're watching our service. We can always go back through afterwards, make sure we collect everybody's requests to make sure they are all prayed over. Uh, our prayer this morning is a responsive prayer. After each petition, you'll hear me say, Lord, in your mercy. And if you feel so led, I invite you to respond by saying, hear our prayer. So again, I'll say, Lord, in your mercy, and you'll say. Lord, Toward the end of our prayer time together is a space of silence. If there is a name you want to lift aloud to the congregation, please use that time to do so. If you'd rather keep it uh, just between you and God, that time is available. Uh, as well as our altar rail. Uh, before, during, or after worship, our altar rail is open to you. If you feel led to come and pray in that fashion, please do uh, come forward. So let us now, friends, put our hearts and minds together and go to the Lord in prayer. Most holy God, you promised to come with power, glory, judgment, and healing. Sometimes that disturbs us. We want you to make all things right and new. But before that can happen, you will show us our sins. Cover us then, Lord, with your healing wings. Clothe us in the righteousness of Christ. Shield us with your Holy Spirit. Make us holy, whole, and filled with your eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Cleanse and strengthen your church throughout the world. Make it watchful and faithful. Let it tirelessly preach the gospel and serve the world for Jesus' sake. Make it a place of healing for people who are wounded by the powers of sin, death, and the devil. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Sometimes it is hard for our congregation to keep on keeping on in worship, witness, and welcome. Keep our eyes firmly fixed on Jesus and our ears alert to his word. Amid the distractions and temptations we experience, grant that we may prefer nothing whatsoever to Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Strengthen and shield everyone persecuted on account of Jesus. By their faithful endurance, turn the hearts of their tormentors to Christ in repentance and faith. Lord, in your mercy. Although the form of this world is passing away, still it is our home. Bestow wisdom, integrity, and mercy upon our leaders in government, education, industry, the military, our courts of justice, and every occupation in which people hold positions of responsibility and power. And grant to everyone the blessing of peace and a measure of prosperity. Lord, in your mercy. Keep all who suffer in your special care, especially those that we bring before you now, either aloud with our lips or silently in our hearts. Grant healing to body, soul, heart, and mind. Strengthen everyone who cares for them and surround them with your protection. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Most holy God, we thank you for the lives of your faithful people, especially those dearest to us who now rest from their labors. Wipe away the tears of all who mourn their loss. Support us throughout our earthly pilgrimage with your word and holy sacrament. Give us strength and charity so that we encourage one another as we follow Jesus even through the valley of death's shadow. Bring us by his merits into your kingdom 
where with all the redeemed we shall adore you in the unity you share eternally with your Son and the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. In the power of the Holy Spirit, we entrust our prayers and petitions into your hands, gracious one. For the sake of your beloved Son, Christ Jesus, our Lord, as we, as one family and in one voice, say the prayer he still teaches us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, friends, our sermon text this morning comes from the prophet Isaiah's book. And we're going to take a look at chapter 12. Isaiah chapter 12. It says, you will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger turned away that you might comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And you will say in that day, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, proclaim that his name is exalted, sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitant of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Friends, this is the word of God for you and I, the children of God. Thanks be to God. Well, friends, this past week I came across a video that really spoke to me. We talked about it briefly Wednesday morning at our Bible study. The setting is in a classroom. And there's a professor up front, and students are there all sitting in their desks. The professor then says to the class, every day we are faced with challenges and obstacles which could help us grow and help define us. Now when stress creeps in, well, it can make things seem quite impossible. It could even paralyze us, preventing us from doing the things that need to be done. At which point the professor takes out a pitcher of water and a glass, and he pours water into the glass about three quarters of the way full. How heavy is this glass of water, he asks his class. One student says it's eight ounces. Another student says it's 12 ounces. Third student says, I bet it's 16 ounces. The professor then says to the class, the absolute weight of the glass doesn't matter. It depends on how long I hold on to it. If I hold it up for a minute, nothing happens. If I hold it up for an hour, my arm will begin to ache. If I hold it up all day long, my arm will feel numb and paralyzed. The weight of the glass hasn't changed. But the longer I hold on to it, the heavier it becomes. The longer I hold on to it, the heavier it becomes. The professor continues, the stresses and worries of life are like this glass of water. If you think about them for a little while, there's no problem. Think about it for a little bit longer, and it begins to hurt. If you think about it all day long, you'll feel paralyzed, incapable of doing anything. And he concludes the video by saying, always remember, put the glass down. Always remember, put the glass down. I like the point that he's making in this video. I don't think there's a person in this room or watching us online who has not at one time in their life or another felt the stresses and anxieties and worries of life. In 
And I also think that most of us, if you're raised the way I was, typically try to deal with these stresses and worries of life on our own, without any help, without any assistance. After all, that's what being a rugged individual is all about, isn't it? We're taught to pull yourselves up by your own bootstrap. Nobody's going to do it for you in this life, so you need to learn how to take care of your own business. And so we do. And what we find is that we are incapable at times of handling things that are thrown our way. And when that happens, things always seem to multiply. They always seem to build upon themselves. And we feel more pressure and stress and anxiety and worry and fear. And the more we try to hold on, the weaker and weaker we get until we become paralyzed and can't do a thing. So I think all of us this morning understand the point that he's getting to about putting the glass down. It means try not to hold on to life's stresses and worries for too long. Let them go. Let them pass. And I get it. The problem is there are a couple of questions that are important that aren't addressed by the video. I mean, once you and I get behind this whole idea of putting the glass down, I think there's two more things we need to address. First is, where are you going to put it? Second, how do you do it? I mean, think about it. If we just put the glass down anywhere, how do issues get resolved? If we just put the glass down anywhere, what's to stop us from picking it back up when we walk right past it the next day? If we put the glass down anywhere, doesn't it just become the burden of the next person who comes behind us to clean up? If we just put the glass down anywhere, what good does that really do? So where do we put it? Where should we put it? And once we decide that, well, then how do we do it? Is it really that easy? What's the mechanism? What are the instructions? How do we get there? How do we make it work? And so I watched this video, and I liked it, but then I had these questions, and so I wrestled with them. And then I got to our reading this morning, and as per usual, the answers are right there in the pages of Scripture. Our reading starts off by saying, you will say in that day. That's where you got to stop, friends, right? What day? What's he talking about here? What day is Isaiah talking about? Well, Isaiah chapter 11 speaks rather powerfully about the reign of the Messiah as king over all the earth. And then this brief chapter of praise, chapter 12, comes from the heart of one who has surrendered himself to Messiah as king and enjoys the benefits of his reign. So what day is it? Well, it's the day that you come to an abiding faith in Christ Jesus. It's the day that you come to see Jesus as your Lord. You see Jesus as your king. You see Jesus as your savior. Jesus as your everything. It's the day that you come to understand the indwelling Holy Spirit that resides in you as his temple and you are determined to turn more and more of your life over to him each and every day. That's the day Isaiah is talking about. Has that day come for you? I pray that it has. And if it hasn't, then I want you to see me after worship. Because it would seem that this is the first step in answering the question of where we are to put the glass down. And the second step comes right after it. In the very next verse, it says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. He has become my salvation. You think that's where we should put the glass down? At God's feet? At the foot of the cross? Scripture seems to think so. Cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. That's Psalm 55, 22. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, 
I will help you, Isaiah 41, 13. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you, 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7. Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41, 10. Put the glass down at his feet. Take it to him and put it in his hand. Just give it to him. You say, well, okay, I get that. But how do we do it? Again, Isaiah 12. But what we've got to keep in mind is it's Isaiah 12 as written in the original Hebrew. Because what you notice in both verses 1 and 4 is the phrase, you will say... In the original Hebrew, that you, and you will say in verse 1, is translated in the singular. That second you in that phrase in verse 4 is translated in the plural. You and I will pronounce it as y'all, won't we? In other words, the first you and you will say is for the individual. The second you and you will say is meant to be community. As a movement, if you read all of verse 12 together, what you see is a movement from the personal to the communal. So let's start there in the personal. You will say. What does it tell us? It says you will say, and it tells us to give thanks to God, to acknowledge his comfort, to recognize him as our salvation, and to with joy draw water from the wells of salvation. Friends, this is prayer. When we read these words, what I see is a need for us to come to God with thankfulness on our lips and then making the needs of our hearts and minds known to the Almighty. I think it is constantly being in a posture of prayer, intentionally carving out those moments to do so, emptying ourselves of everything that is causing us our sleepless nights and trusting in God's providence, God's will, and God's timing in all things. Placing our glasses down at God's feet requires intentionality. It requires coming to God in prayer, asking Him to take it. It requires us willing to have a conversation with God, asking Him to take it. Because, friends, He will. And in His place will be peace, hope, and love. Even if that conversation is not easy or kind. I've told this story three times in the past two weeks, but it bears repeating. And if you've heard it before, I apologize. One of my favorite preachers when we were living in Burlington lost his son when his son was 16 years old in a car accident. And the weeks after were very tough for him as he tried to be strong for his wife and for his family. He tells about a month or so afterwards after they laid their son to rest, they're at an annual conference in Wilmington. And as he's leaving one of the sessions, he notices a storm coming up over the Atlantic Ocean. And so he pulls over and walks onto the beach, and as he tells it, for the next 20 to 25 minutes, he yelled at God. Rain coming down upon him, tears streaming down his face, he yelled at God. Why did you take my son? Have I not devoted my entire life to you? Have I not done everything you asked me in terms of spreading the gospel message? I am trying so hard to be a rock for those that are around me, and I am losing my bearing. He needed help. He needed strength. He needed God. And he says that when he was done and he got back in his car, the clouds parted and the sun came out. And he says he felt a warmth in his bones that he knew did not come from the sun's rays. He felt peace. And the first time in weeks, he felt hope. Friends, he put the glass down. Didn't he? And God took it. But he had to personally bring it to God. So my dear friends, what about you? 
Are you bold enough to bring whatever it is you're dealing with, whatever glass it is that you're holding to God? Even if by bringing it, you have to give voice to some measure of anger or doubt or worry. Friends, God can take it. God wants to take it. He loves us all that much. So bring it to him. Personally. But then we have the second, you will say, in verse 4. Again, it's a plural you this time, meaning a place where y'all make known his deeds. A place where y'all proclaim his name and exalt him. A place where y'all sing praises to the Lord and shout and sing for joy, knowing that in the midst of all of it is the Holy One of Israel. Where do you think that is? You can say it out loud. Yeah. Worship. Notice I didn't say church. Because there's a difference. Yeah? difference between church and worship. We worship all the time. Or at least we have the opportunity to. Not just an hour on Sunday. Friend, if you have a glass you need to put down, a glass to give to God, and you pray and you talk with God about it, then you need to also be in those places where you are surrounded by your brothers and sisters. And you can get their support their encouragement, feed off their strength, talk about the Lord, sing his praises, and just bask in the love, grace, mercy, hope, and joy that only the Almighty can bring. I think part of the power of that story I just told about the preacher and his son is the fact that he told it just like I did in worship. And so in sharing, he encouraged others to follow suit and then also take their glasses and put them to. So who do you surround yourself with? When y'all get together, is it worship? Do they bring you strength? Do they point you to Jesus? What are you carrying, friend? What keeps you up at night? Please don't feel like you have to go it alone. Put the glass down. Go to God in prayer. Put the glass down. Talk to him. Put the glass down. Be in worship with your brothers and sisters. Put the glass down, friend. Let's all of us be Isaiah 12 people and put our glasses down. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Friends, as we uh, pause a moment to reflect upon the blessings that God gives us each and every day, if you discerned a desire, a call, an urging to bring a tithe, gift, or offering this morning, uh, I encourage you to drop it into one of our two offering boxes once worship has concluded. It is in deep and heartfelt appreciation of your faithfulness and continued giving, as well as anticipation of future gifts. I'd like for us to put our hearts and minds together and go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Let us pray. Holy God, who calls us to the journey, it is so easy for us to become distracted so that we wander off the path you have put before us. The chaos of the world around us catches our attention and we neglect the inner journey that keeps us closer to you. We set aside this time to bring our gifts to you. May you draw our attention back to the wisdom and guidance that you put before us. And may it lead us to endurance that will carry us to kingdom presence. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, I want to invite you now to stand as you're able as we sing our closing hymn. It's found on page 368. My hope is built. Page 368.
friends, as we leave this place, find time this afternoon to have a conversation with God. And whatever it is that you are carrying that is causing your sleepless night, take it to him. Because he'll take it from you. And then surround yourself with brothers and sisters who will support you and encourage you and love you. We go now to love and serve the Lord.